Today, we are going to talk about the layers of the atmosphere. And you should listen well, because this invisible layer that is covering the entire planet is fundamental to our existence. It gives us the air that we breathe, it protects us from harmful radiation, and it burns all the meteorites that come towards Earth. Well, not all of them, but most of them. So if you want to understand how the atmosphere creates events as beautiful as these, you'll have to watch the whole video. So prepare yourself and turn on your neurons because we're starting an amazing journey to learn about the layers of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the gaseous layer that surrounds our planet. We typically refer to this gaseous layer as air, but in reality, air is a mixture of different gases. Its composition is as follows. The majority of the gas, 78%, is nitrogen. Only 21% is oxygen. So when we breathe, most of the gas we inhale is actually nitrogen, but only oxygen is able to enter our blood. Nitrogen isn't good for us per se, but it isn't harmful either. It just enters our lungs and stays there without entering the bloodstream until we exhale it. The oxygen, on the other hand, is absorbed into our bloodstream and helps keep us alive. The remaining 1% is composed of various gases, with the most abundant being argon. There are also dozens of other gases, but most notably carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, which makes up 0.032% of the atmosphere. Notice that even such a small amount of CO2 is responsible for the entire greenhouse effect. Most of the CO2 is natural, since living organisms produce it in many ways, but we, humans, are completely changing the balance of CO2 equilibrium by burning coal and oil and other fossil fuels. But we'll talk about that in another video. All right, so let's go ahead and learn about the layers of the atmosphere. The lowest layer closest to the surface is called the troposphere, which derives from the Greek word tropos, which means change. Basically, it means something like the layer that changes due to the weather that occurs within it. It is the layer of the atmosphere in which we live and breathe. It extends up to 12 kilometers in altitude. This layer is also where airplanes fly and where meteorological phenomena occur. As we ascend through this layer, the temperature decreases. It explains why everything is frozen at the summits of high mountains like Mount Everest which has an altitude of almost 9 kilometers. The temperature decreases to as low as negative 60 degrees Celsius at the very top of this layer. Furthermore, and although it may not seem like it, air molecules have weight, and most of the gases concentrate in the lower layer due to gravity pulling them towards the Earth. 80% of the gases of the atmosphere are concentrated in just this layer while the remaining 20% are distributed among the rest of the upper layers. Next, we have the stratosphere, which extends from about 12 kilometers up to 50 kilometers. This layer is where you can find the ozone layer. Ozone absorbs most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, and it protects us from it. Now as for the structure of an ozone, it is a gas formed by three like atoms. Okay, obviously, I'm, I'm kidding you. But really, if you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to click like and subscribe. Something as simple as this is very important for the channel and helping it grow. So, thank you very much for doing that. Anyway, ozone is a gas formed by three oxygen atoms. It releases heat when it absorbs radiation, causing the temperature in this layer to actually increase to around zero degrees Celsius making it a bit warmer than the top of the troposphere. If the ozone layer didn't exist, we would be exposed to a lot of harmful radiation, causing many more cases of skin cancer, as well as other negative effects. So, thanks for protecting us, ozone layer. After the stratosphere, we find the mesosphere, which extends from about 50 to 80 kilometers in altitude. In this layer, temperatures drop again, 
reaching as low as negative 80 degrees Celsius. But the most interesting part is that this layer is where most of the meteorites burn up and disintegrate due to friction from the gas molecules. So again, thank you for saving our lives, Mesosphere. Although, if a meteoroid is too big, it won't fully disintegrate in the mesosphere and could crash into the Earth, which is something that has happened several times before. If you don't believe me, try asking the dinosaurs. The thermosphere extends between 80 and 500 kilometers. In this layer, there are many satellites and it is also where the International Space Station is located situated at an altitude of about 350 kilometers above Earth's surface. So, as you can see, the space station is not actually high enough to be in space, but instead it's in one of the upper layers of the atmosphere. However, that doesn't mean you can breathe around the ISS. The air concentration is so low that breathing is completely impossible. In fact, the space station is so close to Earth that from time to time, has to turn on its engines to move away with a small push so it avoids falling back towards Earth and burning up like one of those meteorites. In this layer, auroras, also known as the Northern Lights, also occur. The auroras are a beautiful natural phenomenon that can be seen in the night sky from Earth's surface. Auroras appear when solar activity is very high and the molecules floating in the thermosphere become ionized. But the most curious thing is that these molecules become very hot when they become ionized by solar radiation, reaching temperatures of up to 1000 degrees Celsius. However, there is such low air density, meaning that there are few and distant air molecules, that even if every molecule is really, really hot, they actually can't heat the surrounding area. So despite these crazy temperatures, it's actually really cold up there. And finally, the last layer is the exosphere, a layer that starts at an altitude of about 500 kilometers and ends, believe it or not, all the way out at about 10,000 kilometers away. It is a layer that barely has any gas at all, but there are still a few molecules of hydrogen and helium, which are the lightest gases on our planet. Now, we're almost done, but before we finish, you should know that the Earth is not the only planet with an atmosphere. All the planets in the solar system have one, and even some moons also have atmospheres. But in general, these planets are not very habitable places. For example, Venus has a temperature of over 400 degrees Celsius and clouds of sulfuric acid that would disintegrate our spacesuits. Or in Uranus, there are dense clouds capable of producing diamond rains, like literal rains of diamonds falling from the sky. Sounds cool, right? But let me tell you that farming diamonds in Uranus is not such a good idea. It is a giant gas planet without even a solid surface to land on. And it's so far from the sun that its average temperature is around negative 200 degrees Celsius. So with these freezing conditions and no possibility of touching the ground, it's impossible to go and try to harvest these diamonds. I guess we'll just have to look for them somewhere else, like digging underground here on Earth. Si hay que ser minero, romper el pico en el hierro No importa el creeper que venga, pa' que sepas que te quiero como un buen minero Me juego la vida por ti If you've made it this far, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you could click like and subscribe, that would be super helpful might be interested in watching one of our next videos, which will talk about even more interesting topics like this one. So if you love geography, geology, and history topics, I recommend you watch more videos and share them with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you so, so much, and I'll see you next time.